Okay, hi guys, EG here. Uh, welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be talking about how you use some linguistic theory to help create more really realistic dialogue. Generally speaking, dialogue in writing is a whole lot different than dialogue in real life. And the reason for this is that in real life people hesitate and they hedge and they use ums and not sures and they pause and there's interruptions and overlap. And in writing you don't often see this because it kind of slows things down and gums up the works. Now in real life you don't tend to notice these things because they're typical, they're normal. And if you do notice them then there's usually a pretty good reason for that and you can include those such things in writing. Now written dialogue does try to follow natural dialogue because that's kind of the point, you're sort of reflecting reality. But you have to make sure that you're moving the story along and you're providing useful information that you're care about your characters, about the story, or about something that is relevant to one of those things. And the ums and the is and the pauses, they don't really do that for you. And realistic conversation makes a point, but it also covers many different topics. You can go from things like talking about goat's milk, to talking about veganism, to talking about the newest pleather jacket. I mean, uh, conversation flows and yet it maintains a steady stream and you don't tend to feel, you know, a bit confused as to how did we get here? Whereas if you do that in written dialogue, sometimes it doesn't always make sense. So how do people do this? How do people make contributions to a conversation that moves it along? So there's there's a set of maxims out there that sort of describe how people go about making relevant and useful conversation or um, additions to a conversation that help it move help move it along and make it uh, more and make it flow. Now these um, these are called Grice's conversational maxims and they are not rules that people follow but they are more descriptions of how people make contributions that um, are useful to a conversation. So there are four maxims. There are, there are four maxims that people follow. These are quantity, quality, relation, and manner. And I will go into those right now. So the first one is quantity. Uh, quantity is the maxim that says you're going to contribute as much information as is necessary to inform the conversation. You're not going to contribute a whole history of ketchup if it's not necessary to the conversation. If someone says, will you pass me the ketchup, you're not going to start talking about, oh, well, did you know that it was made from this, it was made from that, and in the 1960s it became the one sales point. I mean, that's just, that's too much information. We don't need to know that. So that's quantity. The second maxim is quality. Quality says that your contributions are generally truthful. So saying something like, um, I raise porcupines in my spare time is not truthful and while it may be an interesting contribution and discussion point, that doesn't actually help the conversation if you're talking about your dogs. That's um, so it also means that you can rely on the other person's contributions to be truthful. You're expecting that they're telling the truth. The third maxim is relation. Um, relation it means that the contributions to the conversation are relevant. You're not going to start talking about daffodils if you've been having a conversation on the chemical construction of water and how you can use that in a science fiction novel. I mean daffodils, is that relevant? Not really. If it is unusual then you can expect that it will be relevant and there's a reason for that and you can therefore expect an explanation to follow. The fourth maxim is manner. Manner says that uh, contributions are going to be as brief and orderly and clear as possible. You're not going to, yeah, you're not going to tell it winding story about your fishing trip that was somewhere near a car manufacturing company that was made you remember about this thing and you were talking about how Ford and the assembly line came together and if you're trying to if you just ask a person so what did you do on the weekend that might not be terribly brief or helpful it kind of whines and it doesn't really make a point um, it does inform the conversation it is true and it is relevant but it's not brief or concise generally speaking if a person follows these maxims then your conversation is useful it can inform your story and it can move things along however you must be aware that people can and do violate these maxims um, especially the quality maxim people lie or you can do things like sarcasm um, 
sarcasm means that you are deliberately saying something that you don't mean and if you're that is obviously violating the maxim of quality but sarcasm can be a useful tool to create character development and to sort of flesh out a situation or to provide some levity. Um, or if you're violating the maximum of quality on purpose, uh, then your character is a liar and you know this and you want that in there. That lie then has a purpose for the story. But you have to make sure that you're violating these maxims on purpose and for a good reason. Because otherwise you could just have random bits of dialogue that don't actually do anything and don't help your story along, which I've done a few times to fill in a scene if I need to add fluff and um, those are always the bits I cut out later during editing so be aware of that now. You also have to be aware that certain people will violate maxims without realizing it like children. Children are not relevant, they don't make brief contributions, they often don't tell the truth because they don't realize that you know things like oh I saw a fairy isn't actually helpful to a conversation. They'll just sort of spout off the first thing that comes to their mind which is super adorable and it makes for a very interesting character. You can also have characters um, who don't realize that they're violating these maxims. One of the examples I saw in my linguistics class last year was the Big Bang Theory, where um, I've never seen it, but apparently a lot of the main characters make contributions to the conversation that are interesting and scientifically fascinating, but don't actually have anything to do with what's going on. And this makes for a comedic situation, which um, must be resolved and also some social awkwardness, which is supposed to be very amusing, but I've never seen the show, so I don't know. So generally speaking, people follow these maxims. They are, um, guidelines, they are telling you why people, or not why, they're telling you sort of how people make contributions to a conversation um, that makes it flow and that makes it useful and makes it interesting. So if they don't use these maxims, you can ask the question why, make that part of your story. Now you have to be aware that this doesn't cover every aspect of a conversation. Um, there are things like storytelling, which changes these rules. There are things like you know, different, different personalities will break these maxims on um, either deliberately or not, you know, different age groups will do so, or people might not necessarily follow the normal social guidelines of a conversation. So you can use all of these as a tool to say, okay, here's how I can sort of make this conversation relevant to my story, but I'm going to break these rules and then take that, um, that split and figure out why and use that to move along the story, move the story along, make it interesting. So you can use these as a tool in your writing to uh, fill in dialogue and to sort of make a conversation more realistic without adding all of in those extra hedges, those extra ums and the pauses and the overlaps and the interruptions. And while this doesn't cover every eventuality in a conversation, um, it certainly does help. If you have any questions about these maxims or if you have a good example of how you, how you can use such a thing in a conversation, please let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to hear. Um, if you, I will leave a link to a couple of websites that you can use um, to sort of see examples of, this, of these maxims and how they work in real life. Well, I hope this was helpful. Um, that's all I've got for you guys this week. If you have any questions, please let me know and I will see you guys next time. Bye.